Hi everybody, hope you're having a good one. In this video we're going to continue with Inkscape and we are going to create this sky background which is a simple gradient and we're also going to create a basic layout for our tile map. Finally we are going to modify the tiles just a little bit and we're going to see how Inkscape updates the tile map without the need to replace each tile individually. Incidentally, if you're finding this video helpful, you could consider having a look at the entire course on Udemy or Skillshare. See the link in the description. Before we do anything else though, let's set up some layers in Inkscape first. Click on this icon to open the layers dialog. Let me just shift things around a little bit. Okay, first of all, let's rename this layer to Tiles. It's on this layer that I plan to store all the tiles which I'm going to create. I will just store them here as a kind of backup. And let's create a new layer named Tile Map, where I'm going to lay out my tiles. And I'm going to create a background layer, which I'm going to move all the way to the bottom. For the background, I'm going to create a simple sky. I'm going to start by creating a simple rectangle using the rectangle tool. You can easily change the color by clicking on one of the colors down here. But a better way to change the color is by using the fill and stroke dialog. With the fill and stroke dialog we can change both the color of the inside of the rectangle, also known as the fill. I prefer to use the HSL tab which is hue, which is color saturation which is how much color is in it and lightness how dark or light it is you can also set the stroke the stroke is actually the border of the shape in this case i prefer to not have a stroke so i'm going to click on the x here next i want to change the snap settings and i want to make sure that we also snap to the page borders Go back to the selection tool and move the rectangle until the corner of the rectangle snaps with the corner of the page. I can also move the bottom right corner of this rectangle and for that I'm going to use a node editor. In Inkscape everything is made up of nodes and we can use the node editor to change the location of these nodes. In this case we are moving one of the corner nodes of this rectangle in order to enlarge the rectangle. I need to enable this snap to node. So now the corner node of the rectangle is snapping to the corner of the page. Okay, so now I have this rectangle perfectly aligned with the page. I'm going to deactivate these snap settings. And next we add a gradient instead of a fill to this rectangle. The gradient also consists of two nodes, and since I still have my node selector activated, I'm gonna just move these nodes. I can press Ctrl to constrain the angle of this line, so if I press Ctrl, I can easily make a perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal gradient. I'm going to set up my gradient like this and I'm going to move this, these nodes to the top and the bottom of the page. You can change the color of the gradient by making sure you have the right node selected and then use the fill and stroke dialog just to change the color of the node. I'm going to make sure the lower node is fully opaque and I'm going to change the color to, I don't know, orange and select the top node and change the color to dark blue. I can add one more node to the gradient just by double clicking on this line and I'm going to change the color of the middle gradient to light blue. Or perhaps pink is better. Anyway I'm just going to play around with it until I'm more or less satisfied. After some playing around with it I finally decided to do something like this. Okay, now that the background is done, I'm going to lock the layer. 
So if you look up reference on internet, or in this case, if you look out of the window on a <laughs> sunny day, then you will see that, in fact, the sky is much lighter and close to the horizon and darker higher up. So using reference like that can be very valuable. However, you don't want the reference to dictate what you're doing. You want to have some creative control over what you're doing. And in this case, I made the sky darker near the horizon and lighter higher up. Is it realistic? No. Does it look fine? Yes. So try to use your judgment. Let reference guide you and inspire you, but don't let reference dictate what you're going to do. Now it's your turn. I want you to follow the same steps and create your own sky gradient. You can add whatever gradient you like. Then, when you're done, first I'm going to copy this tile to the tile map layer. To copy a tile and paste it into a new layer, just select each tile and press Ctrl C. Then select the layer you want to copy the tile to and press Ctrl V to paste it. You can also use Ctrl X instead of Ctrl C to cut it instead of copying it. If you want to select multiple tiles at once, just hold down Shift. And then I'm going to lock the tiles layer so that I don't accidentally modify it. And now comes the fun part. We are just going to build up some islands using these tiles like building Lego. Just go back to your, your childhood state and pretend you're playing with Lego or pretend <laughs> you're playing with Lego with your kid, which I do almost every day. Let's speed things up so you don't get bored. Let's also add some nice music. <laughs> Remember that you can use these buttons up here to change the Z depth of the tiles. That's just like with layers. Some tiles are going to be lying on top and some tiles below. So you can use this to change whether the tile you currently have selected is on the top, the bottom or somewhere in between. So one thing I should mention is that if you zoom in, you can probably see these ugly lines. That has to do with aliasing and anti-aliasing. Unfortunately, in Inkscape, we will have to live with it. But don't worry about this for now. When we export this image, we will fix it so that we don't see anything like this in the final exported image. Okay, so one last thing I want to talk about in this lesson is modifying these tiles. Remember how when we imported these tiles, we chose to link the file rather than embed it. That means that if we modify the original file, it will automatically be modified in Inkscape. As you can see, I've just drawn a red dot onto the original tile. Let's see what happens when I go back to the Inkscape file. As you can see, the red dot has been added to all of the tiles in the Inkscape tile map. But be careful. If we were to rename, move or delete the file, we'd get an error. So I'm just going to jump quickly back to Krita and I'm going to add a little bit of extra highlighting, just to give it a little bit of extra form or volume or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to re-export the layers again. And when we go back to Inkscape, we see that it's automatically been updated for all of the tiles. So that's one of the benefits of using this method. If you want to make a minor change to one of the tiles, you don't need to update every single one of them. So that's it for this lesson. 
For homework, I want you to make your own sky background in any colors you like, and also start creating your own tile map world. If you're not completely satisfied with the tiles you created, don't forget you can always update them anytime. So long and see you next time. Bye bye.